Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of r slash tales from tech support. In today's episode. But, your PC doesn't have an optical drive. Oh boy, that pesky password change. Before we get started make sure to subscribe so you will never miss a video. So let's get started. But, your PC doesn't have an optical drive. This story takes place exactly 20 years ago, give or take a few days. Midsummer of 2000. I was working for a medical center at the time, and while we had a centralized IT department, satellite locations would have an embedded IT guy on site so that they didn't have to keep sending someone down from the main building for routine issues. Since I was the ranking FNG, I was the guy assigned to our financial services office, home of the least tech-savvy folks in the entire organization and thus some of the more frustrating issues. This was a transitional period for us, as we were going from a 100% analog paper and bankers boxes archive to a digital CD-based one. Older records were still on paper, but newer ones were systematically being scanned in and shredded. So if someone had to retrieve a record from within the past year-ish, we had a dedicated PC for that purpose. You'd search the database on the archive PC, and it would tell you which CD to look for, and what the file name was. You'd then go find the CD, pop it in the drive, grab the file, and return the CD to the rack. Not too difficult, and most people learned how it works without too much hand-holding. Well I got a call one day from a lady who complained that the PC was eating her CDs. I asked her if she could elaborate on that, and she said every time I put a CD in the computer, it doesn't work. I've put three or four CDs in already and none of them work. I asked what she meant by eating, and she said none of the CDs ever came back out. The hell? Okay so now I'm confused, because it suddenly hits me, I've been at my desk all day. The archive PC is in a little nook off to my left, in plain sight, and no one has been there all day. I ask her when this happened, and she says just a few minutes ago. I explained to her that the archive PC is backed by me, and no one has been there all day. And she replies oh no, I didn't want to sit back there in the corner, so I took the CDs back to my desk. Excuse me? Sorry but none of the PCs in this office are equipped with optical drives. The only PC with an optical drive is the dedicated archive PC backed by me. Well you must be mistaken because mine does. At this point I'm definitely picking up some Dunning-Kruger vibes, so I tell her to sit tight while I come over to see what she's doing. I reach her desk, ask her to demonstrate the issue, which she does by shoving a CD between the drive bay covers on the front of her PC. I heard the disc clatter to the bottom of the chassis, and it was all I could to not to rip out my hair right then and there. I ended up taking her PC back with me, opening it up, and fishing the CDs out. Half of them needed to be resurfaced thanks to her carelessness. I got her PC all put back together, got her workstation set back up, and explained to her that she needs to use the archive PC. I explicitly stated that her PC does not have a CD-ROM drive, and that the gap she was shoving the discs into was just a gap. There was nothing in there. I get a call about 30 minutes later from her. Whatever you did, it didn't fix the problem. My PC is still eating the CDs. So once again I retrieve her PC, open it up, dig the discs out, and put in a call to maintenance. I had a guy come over with a tube of silicone putty, which I used to physically seal the gap between the drive bay covers. I kept the PC back with me for an extra hour to let the putty cure, while I resurfaced the discs while contemplating how much whiskey I was going to need at the end of the day, then set her workstation back up again. I tried my best to explain to her using very small words how her PC can't use CDs, and even if it could, she doesn't have the database that tells her which records are on what CD. I reiterate that she must use the dedicated archive PC, because it's the only one with a CD drive, and the only one with the database. She nods in apparent understanding. Ten minutes later, something is still wrong with my PC, I can't get the CDs in the drive anymore. At this point I told her that I was going to get back to her on the issue and terminated the call. I sent the write-up of all three calls to her supervisor, 
along with an email that basically said tech support is my job, making sure your employees can do their jobs is yours. Fix this. Of course worded a lot more politely and tactfully this is just the short version. Apparently her ineptitude extended to many other areas and damaging the archive CDs was the straw that broke the camel's back, because she was no longer employed the following day. Oh boy, that pesky password change. I don't work in tech support, but anytime something doesn't go according to plan for members of my family, I'm the guy to call. I have quite a lot of stories, but this one is the most recent and by far the funniest. Even more so, coming from my 35-yo girlfriend and not the usual suspect my 70-yo aunt. To give you some background at one time we both worked for large company which uses an open source app to store passwords. It's a piece of software that allows you to save your login details for specific sites, other apps, etc. in a local encrypted database. When you then browse a site for which you have a password set up you can just press a key combination and it will populate your username, password and log you in. So there's no chance of typos, you don't have to remember the passwords and Google doesn't have them either. We kinda liked it so we each use it at home as well. I should also preface this by saying that my girlfriend gets quite nervous when it comes to handling finance over the internet and there's even a slight deviation from what she's used to. Anyways, to the story. Some time back Google started informing users about potentially pwned passwords. I received a bunch of notifications, my GF only a few. Back before the password app days she was in the habit of reusing passwords so I told her to change them, just so we're sure. Or at least the most important ones the main email address and internet banking. She hesitantly agreed. She took out her laptop and lied down in bed, which is directly behind my PC setup, directly behind my back, I can't see her. I put on my headphones and continued coding and listening to a podcast. After 15 minutes I hear a loud scream. Shocked, I throw down my headphones while simultaneously jerking around to see what was wrong. My GF was freaking out, OMG, what the hell? I can't log into the bank. OMG, I don't even remember the code to reset my password over the phone. I'm screwed, I'm totally screwed. Well, that's bad, I thought. If her internet banking got compromised, sorting it out with the bank is going to be the most annoying thing ever. I managed to hide my slight nervousness and started asking questions. Me, it's fine, we're gonna figure this out. Was the banking password in the pwn list Google gave you? GF, no, it wasn't, but but but. I can't log in, we're screwed. Angry sad scared face. Me, okay, what were you doing? Did you just go to your bank's page, tried to log in with the password app and got an incorrect password error message? GF, yes. Well, she was using the app, so not a typo then. Me, when was the last time you were able to log in? GF, yesterday. Me, alright, we might have to call the bank, then. At least to see what's going on. Let me google the number. Well, that's not good. But since I know how stressed she can get, let me check again, just for my peace of mind. Me, okay GF, breath in and out, in and out. Now please, explain exactly what you were doing. Step by step, click by click. GF, well, I changed my password and now I can't log in. Me, that's fine, so just to restate what happened you opened Chrome, went to your bank's page, logged in, clicked change password, put it a new password, clicked save, clicked logout, and now you can't log back in using the new password. GF, a brief blank stare. GF, no? Me, wait, what do you mean no? GF, I didn't do it like that. Me, well, how did you do it then? GF, well, I opened the password app. GF, edited the bank entry with a new password. GF, pressed save. And now I can't log in. Me, a brief blank stare. I almost wet myself from how hard I laughed.